Hey guys, and welcome to episode 13 of How to Be a 3D Animator. As you can see in the title, we're learning how to do lip syncs. To actually understand what we're doing here, you would have had to watch the last video. I'll have it pop up in the top right card right now. So you can just click on that, watch that real quick, learn how to save poses, and you should be able to follow this video a lot easier. If you're new here, welcome. And if you find value in these videos, well, we make them every week. And by we, I mean me, because it's just, it's just me. And if you're a subscriber, welcome back. You know the drill. If you find any value at any point in this video, just uh, make sure to smash that like button. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm. All right, before I continue ranting, this is what we're going to be making in this video. Now, just a disclaimer, I had little to no time this week to actually make this. And I explain later in the video exactly why. But so yeah, I couldn't even get the animation done. Um, I just, I left it at blocking and I just try to implement a lip sync to it really fast. So, mm, you know, just don't be too harsh on it. All right. Here it is. I can't rewrite what's perfect. Let's jump right into this week's video. <laughs> so for this, we're going to be using Ray. This is a rig from CGTarian. CG Terry Ter Terry. Okay, I'll have the link in the description. Jesus. I think from all of my rigs, Ray has the best facial capability. So that's that's the main reason why I'm gonna be using this. So first step, let's get the clip. I've downloaded something that's not too fast. Since we're just learning lip sync, I'll have a link in the description where you can download the voice file. Okay, step one done. Step two is to find and create a picker for all of your mouth and facial controls. Let me just do that real quick. There we go. Okay, step three. Go ahead and either get a mirror or use reference for the base mouth shapes you're gonna be creating. I'm actually gonna go ahead and link a reference for you guys so you can just have that on the side, try and make the shapes similar to that. Again, the links will be in the description. And step four, actually create the essential mouse shapes, which are the ones I just talked about, which are gonna be in the description. But I'm gonna have them up on the screen right now. Okay, now it's time to begin. Just before we start though, this video is brought to you by smashing that like button because ain't nobody supporting your boy except your likes to the algorithm gods. All right, I'm creating a mouse shape here for you guys. While this clip is rolling, I just wanted to say thank you all for the overwhelming support. I honestly didn't know how this channel is going to go when I created it two months ago, but I think we should be en route to break 1K subs by the end of the year, which is amazing. Thank you all very much. That's a happy crying emoji. Also, I'm doing a Q&A episode soon where I answer your questions. So if you have any questions about animation, the industry, work-life balance, just drop a comment down below. And as you're making your way back up from the comment section, make sure to slightly smash that like button. Okay, essential tips. You guys should probably write these down. So just grab a pen and paper or open up your notes on the computer. Hopefully you're still listening. So you wanna keep everything linear when you're doing mouse shapes. And again, this is just for TV kids entertainment. This has so far been the rule of thumb, you could say. It's not, it's not really a rule, but it, it just works best because uh, for kids entertainment, kids TV, usually it's a lot more snappier, everything's a lot more poppy. And so you wanna keep the graph editor linear when you're doing mouse shapes because you want the mouth to pop open and then you wanna give it more frames to settle back in. Tip number two, make sure to hit the accents. Number three, you don't have to animate every syllable. Otherwise you'll just end up with your lips looking like a motor engine, just going and uh, you don't want that. Number four, you wanna keep it simple, just hit the big accents and then work your way down to the smaller ones if the mouse shapes don't read properly. Number five, offsetting is something essential in lip sync. So if your character's jaw opens at the accents, let's say you hear an ah, and you open the mouth as you hear the ah on the timeline. When you play that back in real time, it'll seem like the mouth is trying to catch up to the words, meaning the mouth feels slow. Your ears will hear the ah, then you'll visually process the mouth opening. So animate real time, but before rendering or before play blasting, bring the keys back by two frames. There's multiple ways to do this. This is just my way. 
Okay, don't don't come knocking on my door. All right, don't 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 be trying. Don't sue me, bro. Don't sue me. Okay. Okay, I, I've lost I've lost count of what number we're at, but some of the important mouse shapes to hit are actually the closed ones, like M, B, P. These are the mouse shapes you need to keep for at least two frames. So it really registers to the viewer. For at least two frames, so it really registers to the viewer. Otherwise, if you just blend over it, blend over M's or blend over P's, it's just not going to read on screen as strong as it should. Because usually those syllables come right before a pop. So, for example, B, but. So your mouth just pops open to ah after the B. Pop. There you go, like we just said, pop. P, so you got your mouth closed, then pa, mouth wide open. Max. And actually, that's that's all the examples I can think of. And if the mouth isn't closed for two frames beforehand, then again, it just wouldn't read. So you want to, it's m, p, and b, or m, th, m, m. You want to have your mouth closed for two frames and keep it closed for two frames before the pa. Okay, so here's a small sample I did really quick. I actually won't be home on the weekend, and that's usually when I get most of my work done. So this episode is going to be done in in a hurry. I'm kind of rushing. I'm rushing this, all right? I really am. So let's, let's pop in our voice clip. So we're going to drag our file in, our voice file. Um, I'll have this in the description for you guys so you can download it. I'm going to drag this into our timeline. Now, right click on the timeline, go to sound, click it, make sure it's selected, and now let's pl press play. Let's see what happens. The director has actually torn up. Yeah, okay. So we actually want a certain section of this. So what I'm going to do is right click on my timeline, go to sound, click on the little box where it says sound bit, click on the box right there. This, uh, the attribute editor pops up on the right and you want to go to offset and I want to offset it by negative 210 frames. So I want the voice clip to start 210 frames earlier so we can get to this part. I can't rewrite what's perfect. There I we go. Here I have my ABX picker on the side. And I have this little button that just selects all the mouth controls. So I can just select this and set a key. And that's it. That I just, I just click that button. It selects all the controls I need. And I can move on to the next mouse shape. Now, I've also, as, a, as I provided to you guys in the sample, in the description, these are the poses that I've made. Um, Again, I didn't have too much time, so these they're not perfect, and there's only a few of them. Usually you want to have a set of happy poses, neutral poses, and sad poses. Here I pretty much just have some um, not-so-polished happy poses, happy mouse-shaped poses. That's what the H stands for. So as you guys can see, I have H underscore A-E-I, so that's the sort of mouth, that's the sort of... Uh, mouth shape those uh, syllables make. I have um, H, again, stands for happy, B, M, P. They're, they're pretty much the same shape. You can adjust the upper and lower lips um, according to either if it's a B, if it's a B, M, or P. Okay. So anyways, I have these on the side. So that's what I'll be uh, working off of. You guys should definitely make your own before starting a lip sync. It'll just make your lives a ton easier. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and Listen to this first syllable. I can't. I can't. So we could have, we could just keep the mouth closed as is. Maybe I'm just selecting the jaw here. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Oops. Just a little bit. Just so there's some breathing in there. I can't. So we're going to go to this, the accent, which is I. I can't. So it's frame 10. And we're going to go click our A uh, pose. And again, this is happy. I didn't think this one through because I made the shapes before I got the voice. 
And so I'm just selecting part of the mouth and bringing this down where he's a little bit more upset about it, like the voice is suggesting. So I can't. This is moving too much. I. And then the jaw is. I'm just playing it out with my mouth as, as I'm hearing it. So it's I. And when I do it like with physically with my mouth, I notice that my mouth gets wider and my jaw closes. So I'm just closing the jaw a little bit. And I'm going to make this a little wider. I can't. And then it just turns into a... I have a neutral pose, which I'm going to, or a T pose I'm going to use. I see the jaw move forward a little too much, so I'm going to bring it back. And again, this is a happy pose. I don't want a happy pose. I'm going to select the edges, bring that down so he's a little bit more upset. I can't. Okay, well, I'm going to actually, I need, I need him to hit for can't a little bit sooner so I'm gonna this is my A this is my E frame 12 so I'm gonna bring E a little bit one frame closer to A ah. so it's I and then K. can't can't okay so 13 is K 17 is T which makes pretty much the same uh, the same mouth shape and I'm going to go into in between where he says ah. And again, the excuse me, the key here is um, you want the mouth closed, then you want the mouth to pop open, but then settle back into close. So we have, again, frame 13. Ah, and we already have an ah shape here. Again, this is for TV kids entertainment with uh, with tv everything's rushed so you're on a you're on a you got a huge quota to finish in a week and so it's a it's a lot more quantity and a lot less quality so you like you want it to look good but they're not really you know about the quality of your work being like you know feature level being being like disney level so you, you want to get the general mouth shapes out of the way when you're in the tv industry and that's pretty much what we're doing here. Now, if this was like a demo reel piece, I would go in and individually adjust each um, mouse shape as it required me to. Okay, so it says, I can't. So that's a little too robotic for me. And the second can't isn't as big as the first one. So I'm just going to close his mouth a little bit so it's not popping too much. I can't. There we go. So for the sake of the length of the video, I'm just going to uh, skip forward and apply the same principles to the rest of the animation. And I'll just show you guys the finished product doing exactly what we're doing here. I can rewrite what's perfect. I can rewrite what's perfect. I can rewrite what's perfect. Again, if you pay really close attention, um, I can't. So we're hitting the accents, we're putting the keys on the accents, but when you play this real time, if you pay really close attention, it'll feel like the mouth is trying to catch up to the voice. The mouth shapes are trying to catch up to the voice. Rewrite what's perfect. What's perfect, and then then we see the mouth close into the T. Perfect. Yeah. So that's not gonna do. What you want to do is, um, again, so I have the, my little controller here, the mouth control, selects all my mouth controls. Click that, go to the graph editor, and select everything. Make sure everything is on linear, then change the this little status bar right here. Change that to minus equals two. And that brings back all the lever keys by two frames. And now if we look at it again, I can rewrite what's perfect. And all right, that doesn't look half bad considering how rushed this was. <laughs> again, sorry for the shorter and more rushed videos. 
YouTube actually favors shorter videos compared to the long ones. And so it, it doesn't really allow me to get too much into detail with these lessons. They got to be like short, almost highlights of a lesson. Um, I'm actually considering starting either like Patreon or Skillshare thing. I, I'm not too sure. Like where, where it's structured more like a course and I'll be uploading more longer, but way more in-depth videos, but like monthly instead of weekly. On top of these weekly videos on YouTube, of course. I don't know. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. If that's something you'd be interested in, I'd, I'd love to hear your input on that. As always, happy animating, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.